Welcome to a video on the second derivative of parametric equations. The goals of this video are to determine the second derivative of parametric equations and then also to determine when a curve written in parametric form is concave up or concave down. So in the previous video we talked about how to determine the first derivative of parametric equations and now let's talk about how we find the second derivative. This first part should look very familiar. The second derivative of y with respects to x is equal to the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x. But the problem is, in parametric form, this first derivative is written in terms of t. So to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we have to find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t, and then divide by the derivative of x with respect to t. And this will give us the second derivative, as long as both x of t and y and t are differentiable, and dx dt does not equal zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. Now these examples that we're gonna take a look at are the same ones that we did when we were finding the first derivative and finding the equation of tangent lines, but now we're gonna talk about the second derivative and concavity. So before we can find the second derivative, we do have to find the first derivative. So let's go ahead and review that. dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt well dy dt would be negative one, dx dt would be two t. Now because we're going to have to find the derivative of this with respect to t to determine the second derivative, let's go ahead and rewrite this as negative one half t to the negative one. Now to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we're gonna find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t and then divide by dx dt. So the derivative of the derivative with respect to t is going to be positive one-half t to the negative two. And we'll divide this by dx dt, which is equal to two t. So one-half divided by two is the same as one-half times one over two. That'll give us one-fourth. And here we can subtract our exponents. Negative two minus one will give us t to the negative third or t to the third in the denominator. Now to determine where it's concave up and concave down, we have to determine where the second derivative is equal to zero or where it's undefined. Now this is never going to equal zero because we have a fraction that has a numerator of one. However, it will be undefined when t is equal to zero. So now we use t equals zero and divide up the intervals of all possible values of t and then determine the sign of the second derivative in each of those intervals. Well, there's no restrictions on t, so t is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that means we'll have two intervals. The first interval will be from negative infinity to zero, and the second interval will be from zero to infinity. Again, we use this value here, where the derivative is zero or undefined, to divide up the given interval for t. Now we're going to determine the sign of the second derivative in each of these intervals. And then from that sign, we can determine whether it's concave up or concave down in that given interval. So let's use t equals negative one and sub it into our second derivative. Well, if t is equal to negative one, the second derivative will be negative, which means this entire interval will be concave down. And let's use t equals one from this interval. When t is one, the second derivative will be positive. Therefore, in this entire interval, the curve will be concave up. So just to summarize, this curve will be concave down when t is less than zero, and it will be concave up when t is greater than zero. Now before we take a look at the graph, let's see what point we're talking about when t is equal to zero. When t is zero, x will be zero and, and y will be two. So we're looking at the point zero, two. So here's the point zero, two, when t is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and determine the orientation of this curve by determining the points when t is equal to negative two and positive two. When t is equal to negative two, negative two squared would be four, so x is four. y would be two minus negative two, or two plus two, that'll give us four. 
So we'd be at the point four, four right here when t is equal to negative two. When t is equal to positive two, two squared is four, and two minus two would be zero. So we'd be at the point four, zero or right here when t is equal to two. So we can see as t increases, the curve is traced out in this direction. So now if we look at the curve that's traced out on the interval from negative infinity to zero, that would be this piece of the curve here, which we can see is concave down, again on the interval when t is less than zero. And then when t is on the interval from zero to positive infinity, we trace out this piece of the curve, which again verifies our work because this piece is concave up when t is greater than zero. So we do have to be a little careful about this because we're defining the intervals for concavity with respects to t and we're analyzing the graph on the xy coordinate system. Let's go and take a look at a second example. Same question except now t is on the closed interval from zero to two pi. So let's go ahead and start by finding the first derivative. dy dt would be four cosine t. and dx dt would be negative four sine t. So our derivative would be negative cotangent t. Now let's go ahead and find the second derivative of y with respects to x. And that's gonna be equal to the derivative of the first derivative with respects to t divided by dx dt. Well the derivative of cotangent t is negative cosecant squared t. We want the opposite of that so we'll have positive cosecant squared t divided by dx dt, which will be negative four sine t. Remember, cosecant t is the same as one over sine t, so this is the same as negative one over four sine cubed t. Now we want to determine whether this is equal to zero or where it's undefined. Well again, a fraction is never going to equal zero when we have a one in the numerator, but this will be undefined when sine t is equal to zero, and sine t is equal to zero at zero, pi, and two pi. Now we'll go ahead and determine our intervals. Well, we're only considering this on the interval from zero to two pi, so we'll use pi to divide up this interval. The first interval will be from zero to pi, and the second interval will be from pi to two pi. Now we'll determine the sine of the second derivative in each of these intervals, and then draw our conclusions. So for this first interval, let's consider pi over two. Well, the sine of pi over two is equal to one, so we'll have negative one over four times one. Well, of course, that'll be negative, so that tells us that the curve will be concave down on this entire interval. And now let's consider three pi over two for the second interval. Well, the sine of three pi over two would be negative one, so, and negative one cubed is still negative one. So I have negative one over four times negative one, and that'll be positive. So that tells us that the curve will be concave up on this interval. So again, just to summarize, it'll be concave down on the open interval from zero to pi. It'll be concave up on the interval from pi to two pi. And notice the question does ask for open intervals. Now when we go to take a look at this example, remember t actually represents the angle that we're referring to. So it should be concave down in the first and second quadrants and concave up in the third and fourth quadrants. Let's go ahead and take a look. When t is between zero and pi, we're looking at this piece of the curve, which is concave down. And when t is between pi and two pi, we can see that it's concave up. And there we go. We're out of time, so we'll take a look at the third example in part two. Thank you for watching.